this one is slightly different. I'm looking back to the 1960s to the roots of pub rock and I'm talking about bands that could have made it, should have made it and why didn't they? My guess is as good as mine. No one knows why they weren't as big as acts like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Kinks, the Small Faces. So let's start with the first one and that is The Action. Now The Action were formed in 1963 in North London and they were called The Boys. The main two people in the band at the time were Alan King, who was the bass player, who was vocalist, and Reg King. I'm not sure whether they were brothers or related anyway, but they both had the same area, had the same name, so um, make your own mind up. They were one of the most successful live acts of the time. They even went to support The Who at the Marquee Club, and when they sound checked, the manager of The Who sent them packing because they were far too good, basically. They signed to Parlophone with George Martin producing them, who of course was the man behind the Beatles, and everybody expected the action to be as big as the Beatles. But sadly, they released lots of singles and they never really were. Even though a lot of people thought that they were really good. They're all things like Ready Steady Go and things like that. So they had the same chances. They even went to the States and did the Ed Sullivan show. But for some reason, their singles never really took off. And this is sort of what they sound like. I can't do too much in the way of playing music by these bands because YouTube doesn't like you playing music unless you own the copyright and I clearly don't own the copyright to all these 60s bands. So what happened was they didn't just stop. The lead singer Reg King went off to do his own thing. By this time Martin Stone who was quite a famous guitarist he was considered as a replacement for Brian Jones in the Rolling Stones but never quite made it. He joined them as the lead guitarist. They called themselves Mighty Baby. The action were really like a R&B beat band that uh, really looked to the Motown sound. In fact, Steve Marriott the Small Faces says they were the only band that successfully recreated that sound and they did close harmonies on stage and things like that. But Mighty Baby were not like that at all. They sounded more like this. Alan Bam King went off to play in Ace, whose single How Long was a huge hit, and then he co-founded Juice on the Loose with Ron Kavana. And then suddenly Bam got up and emigrated to New Zealand, and I think about 10 years ago, he formed a band in New Zealand called Juice on the Loose. Cheeky devil, eh? So there you go. Sadly, Martin Stone has subsequently passed away. He played with Marianne Faithful and places like that, and he was just really one of the best guitarists. After Mighty Baby, he went off to play with Chili Willie and the Red Hot Peppers, and then he played with Repis Eric for a while, and things like that, and he was really good. Last time I saw Martin was in my alter ego, a small independent publisher, and he was involved in that work because he used to buy books, say, at a jumble sale or at a second-hand shop, and then he'd find the value ones and then sell them to dealers. So who's the next band we're going to talk about who mysteriously vanished? More so than the action, because the action that continue to this day with Alan Bam King's Juice and the Loose in New Zealand. So who's the next band? The next band we're going to talk about is The Misunderstood, and it's almost as if they they formed themselves with that name because they were misunderstood. They were formed originally in Riverside, California, and they came to London to make their name in 1966. And they were certainly way in front of anything else in the psychedelic in the psychedelic world at that time. Because don't forget, most of the psychedelic stuff didn't really start till late in the 60s, but they were knocking it out in 1966. And John Peel, who became their manager, the DJ John Peel, called them the greatest live band he ever saw. And that's like late in his career. So he's obviously seen quite a few live bands. And apparently, they were fantastic. There is no live video footage that I can see, sadly, but um, here is their big hit, Take Me To The Sun, I think it's called, something like that. Anyway, you don't expect me to be accurate, do you? Surely. Why did the misunderstood vanish? Well, it was all very strange because they had internal conflicts. They fell out with John Peel for one thing. 
various members of the band because they were American, didn't have work permits. One guy went back to the, to the draft because apparently he was drafted to go to Vietnam. R.I.P. him. The big thing was when the guitarist, Glenn Ross Campbell, formed Juicy Lucy, who had a hit with Bo Diddley's Who Do You Love? <laughs> Remember that? And that band, Juicy Lucy, had so many members. It's virtually an A to Z of the forthcoming pub rock movement. So that's the misunderstood. Were they misunderstood? They certainly were. So who's next then? But before we get there, if you like this kind of stuff and you like what I do, please subscribe, press the notification bell, like it if you like it, if you don't like it, well, you know. And comment, let me know what you think. Have you got any memories of these days? Do you know what I'm talking about? I must admit, I was still at school at this time, I'm talking about the 1960s. I mean, I was at school till 1972, and that was in Yorkshire to start with, and then in West Wales. So you couldn't get further away from swinging London than Yorkshire and West Wales, unless, of course, you're talking about, well, lots of places. But anyway, who's the next band that was destined for greatness but never quite made it due to unfortunate circumstances? Kaleidoscope, not the American band of the same name, but the British psychedelic band who were, again, so far ahead of their time in the psychedelic world. This is in 1967 that um, their album Tangerine Dream, and there's a bit about that later, you might want to stick around for that too, a bit of a mystery there, it has been called as influential to psychedelic rock music as Piper at the... What's it called? Piper at the Gates of Dawn, the Pink Floyd album. Very good, but it got a very good reception by the press and by DJs. It got played on the underground radio, and, but it never really took off and mainstream totally ignored it. Mr. Small. Kaleidoscope just basically drifted away and none of the members went on to do anything of any great significance, although they would probably think that their garden centres and whatever they opened would be. But um, sadly, Kaleidoscope were not to be too far ahead of their time. Now, this thing about Tangerine Dream, because it was almost exactly the same time when Tangerine Dream, the band, and Tangerine Dream, the album by Kaleidoscope, were formed. Now, the leader of Tangerine Dream, the band, says that it's as a result of mishearing lyrics in a Beatles song. With tangerine trees. But how can that explain how the band Tangerine Dream came about in, I think it was October 1967, at almost the same time as the album was being recorded in London, several hundred miles away. There's a mystery for you. And who's the next band we're going to talk about? Because it's like going somewhere now, aren't we? We're getting somewhere. The next act, we're going to go north of border to Scotland. Because it's the poets. Now, the poets won't mean a lot to many people, I'm afraid. Even though they were, I think, one of the best bands to come out of the 1960s. They were managed by Andrew Lou Goldham, who was the producer, record producer of the Rolling Stones, the town manager of the Stones too. And he was convinced that they were going to be the next big thing. In fact, he put everything he had into making them the next big thing. They were seen by many as Britain's answer to the birds, the American band. Kind of spacey, folky country. They had a couple of minor hits, but they never really got anywhere. How sad. The next band is The Eyes, which, when you bear in mind that my eyes are going through a few medical problems at the moment, is slightly, what's the word, um, is it ironic? I don't know anyway, let's not worry about that. But The Eyes from the 1960s was a band that never even got to make a whole album. They were a sort of a mod band that were very style conscious, and I really liked the sort of stuff they did. Sorry it's got to end this way. 
During 95 and 1996, the Eyes released several EPs and singles, but sadly, as I say, they never made any impact and they so vanished into nowhere. Who's the next one? I keep saying that, don't I? It must get very annoying. Does it get very annoying? Comment and let me know if it does. Anyway, who is next? Let's talk about the Idol Race. Now, it started off as the Idyll Race. There you go, but it was changed to the Idol Race. In Birmingham, in the 1960s, Everybody seemed to play in the same bands. So this was a development from another band that was called, I think it was called the Night Riders. And basically everybody you think of in Birmingham bands that became famous in Birmingham, like Roy Wood, Jeff Lynn, Steve Gibbons, Trevor Burton, all these people that we know now, they all were played in these various bands. Now, Roy Wood went off to form the move for the Idol Race. Jeff Lynn was really the main songwriter and singer in the band. The Idol Race was basically formed as the Idol Race to showcase his talents. Now, Top of the Pops brings you another new record number that could happen. Here's a live performance of At the End of the Road by The Idol Race. There was peace and quiet for me Down the wall beside the sea Things are going wrong, boy Things are going wrong Everything that they seemed to do went wrong. They put out singles and then the day before they were supposed to go out, something happened and it just like was a thing. And then Roy Wood has been on to Jeff Lynne to join the Move for ages. And eventually, I think in 1969, Jeff Lynne said he would join the Move, but it was a secret thing at the time. The fact is that Roy Wood and he were going to form the Electric Light Orchestra, which is what they both want to do. <laughs> And their aim was to put everything they had into forming and to playing live with the Electric Like Orchestra. And that's exactly what they did. So that's why the Idol Rays never made it. So, who's the final band we're going to talk about? The Smoke. If you mention The Smoke to anybody now, they might think of My Friend Jack, which was number two, I think, in Germany. I mean, they were huge in Germany. But here, where the BBC banned it because of overt drug references, it only got to number 35 without any airplay. Now, the smoke came down from Yorkshire and when one of the members left, they decided to go a bit more psychedelic and a bit more rocky and get involved with the swinging London 60s thing, and they um, formed the smoke. As I say, they had one hit, and yet they kept putting out singles, they kept trying and trying and trying, and I can remember seeing them, they used to do supports, but they never really did it, and then when punk came along, they just packed it in. Realising it was all over. But. The lead guitarist went off to be the, I think, the sound engineer for Boney M, who did a cover version of My Friend Jack. on so thank you for watching if you enjoyed it as i say like follow me and all the rest of it and i hope to see you next time goodbye <laughs>